This is the Amazon. Warani Indian Territory. We're the only ethnic group still living according to traditional custom here in the Selva rainforest of the Amazon. Civilization came along some 50 or 60 years ago and completely disrupted our way of living. Today, because of civilization, I believe we will lose our territory, and in 10 years' time, the Warani people will no longer exist. My name is Penti, and I live near the Kanonico River in a community called Bamano. I'm 36 years old, and I live here with my wife. I have eight children. My oldest son's name is Tepenia, and he is 18. The other one is Boya, age nine. The youngest, Kena, is two. She's my sweetheart, my favorite, my youngest child. I live in a traditional house. There is food, room to rest or sleep. Sometimes we make darts, lances, quivers or hammocks here. We want to continue to raise our families here in the Selva rainforest. Life is tranquil here, even though I must hunt for meat in order to provide meat and cultivate yuca in order to make chicha. We're not accustomed to wearing clothes. If a person is Warani, they prefer to be natural. Being dressed is for other cultures, those who are ashamed. It is important to see a person's body, to know a person's life. It must be visible. It is our way of living in the Amazon. There are several Warani communities. Over the whole territory there are 34, which is about 2,000 people scattered throughout. In Bameno, there are about 80 or 90 of us, including children, adults, and the elders. We live on fishing, hunting, and cultivation in the selva. We survive thanks to the selva and its rivers, which keep us alive. Today, we are subjected to the damage caused by oil companies and bloggers. No one is supervising this destruction in Warani territory. There are seven companies dividing up our territory. Their pollution is very detrimental to us. That is why the animals retreat further and further, and we can no longer hunt. Because of pollution, we must travel far away in order to bring home any fish. Penti and his companions enter the selva. Before beginning to fish, the women prepare a strange earthen mixture. The men come along to stand watch in case any game animals appear.
la forma de pescar. The type of fishing we do is called cuni. In Spanish, they call these barbasco leaves. This fishing is women's work, because they are used to grinding and crushing the leaves. They also gather the fish. We crush the barbasco to make a thick paste mixed with earth. We will fish with it in this river. This poison is very strong. As soon as fish smell it, they try to escape. It's natural. It's like venom. We must be careful. It's delicate work. If a child ate a leaf, he could become ill or even die. The elder Waranis participate like everyone else in daily chores. At 63, Yamenka is the community's oldest woman. She initiates the fishing. She is in charge. Recent heavy rains mean the fishing will probably not be very good. Nonetheless, the women dilute the barbasco poison in the river. The others await downstream for the current to do its work. We use vegetable fiber nets to gather the fish. We weave palm leaves in the shape of a net. This fish is called kayachama. In Warani we say oba. This fish is very good, there are no bones. Enti and his group return to the village but have only brought back one fish, not enough to feed everyone. Luckily, in the Nani Cabos, the large palm-thatched family huts, there is still a good supply of food. There are still reserves of meat, thanks to some captured animals, but they will have to find more food soon. Sometimes we fish for crocodiles. We pull them out of the river after killing them with our spears. We also sometimes catch small ones and raise them until they are big enough to eat. Crocodile meat is tender and very tasty. In the early afternoon, in preparation of tomorrow's hunt, the Warani leave for the forest to find an element essential to their way of life. We're looking for a thick, flat vine, or creeper, that comes from the tops of trees and is long enough to reach the ground. This plant is called onta in Warani. In Spanish, it's called curar, or poison. It's a vine that grows in the selva. It's natural.
We scrape it in order to get a powder from which we will make the poison. It's a natural poison, mixed with nothing else, just pure poison. This is an ancestral way of hunting. Our ancestors have always used it. Curar is the most powerful poison we have. Curar is a well-known poison. All hunters use it. You need a full day to prepare curar. You must first go find it, then prepare it and dry it out. Upon their return to the village, Penti and the two eldest men in the village, Kimperi and Awa, use the powder to prepare the poison for the hunt. We are beginning the preparation of curar. After having wrapped and secured the powder, we pour water through it to have it come out drop by drop and obtain a coffee-colored liquid. <laughs> The poison is liquid, but once it is heated, it thickens. This poison only affects the blood of the animal. The venom goes into its body and reaches the heart. Once the animal is cooked, there is no danger. The heat makes the poison evaporate, and it can be eaten without danger. It doesn't affect man, it's natural. <laughs> You just spot a monkey in a tree, shoot it with one or two poison darts, and after a while he can't move. Then you shoot one more dart to finish him off, and he falls and dies. Everyone knows their place in the Warani community. There is no actual chief, but there is a profound respect of elders who hold the knowledge of tradition and ancestral wisdom. Since their discovery in 1956 and the arrival of civilization, the tools they use have evolved a great deal. Now for our work, we use metal tools like the machete, the hatchet and knives. Before, we didn't have all this. For our ancestors, work was difficult because it was hard to find a rock and break it in two to obtain a cutting edge. For the past 60 years, this has become easier with the arrival of metal. In the community, all the families help each other. For example, we all get together in one house to make spears. Uh, 
Moya is joven. Moya is a young man in our community who would like to get married. A man must be a hard worker in order to get married. He must know how to make a spear and to hunt. Then he can be married as a Warani warrior. I think it's been a year that Moya has courted this young lady. A young lady must be dressed in traditional, natural attire and made up with achute and feathers to prepare for marriage. The bride-to-be is called Maira and she is 16. Yamenka, the talkative one, and Mineo, the wise one, organize the work of the women. The diameter of their balsa earrings speaks of their position in the community, even though this custom has practically disappeared. Women have a very active role in the society. They organize the daily tasks. The elders are very important to us. They pass along the culture through the generations. <laughs> <laughs> our children learn our customs thanks to them. <laughs> At the end of the day, Penti comes back to Bamino and joins the other men for their daily session of arms handling. For the youngest, this time is crucial, as the most agile will accompany the men in the upcoming hunt. Then Fabian finds an ant's nest in a tree, and the situation degenerates into fun. Oh, <laughs> 
What we call bura is something we love. We like to eat these ants and have always done so. We have them every morning for breakfast. They're drawn to the light and burn their wings. Some of them escape and fly away, others fall on the ground. This type of ant has a milky taste. It's good. It's the color of milk. They're usually eaten raw, but some eat them toasted. <laughs> After a good breakfast, Penty and his companions leave for the hunt. The Warani always live near a river. We need it to live, to wash ourselves and to drink. But in Warani territory we are in despair. What is hurting us are these companies destroying all the riches of nature. The oil companies are bringing pipelines to the river. They say they are dumping drinking water, but in fact it is gasoline that is spilling into the river. Afterward, the children bathing in the river have colics, pains and fungal infections. This is terrible for us. Fish, people, nature, everything that lives consumes water. It's a fact of life. For the Warini, the situation seems hopeless. The oil companies are less than 250 kilometers from Bameno. Throughout South America, all the large rivers descending from the Andes Mountains going into the Amazon are polluted. This is a true disaster. The women leave the village to go and reap the fruit of a small subsistence crop. The women here gather yucca roots and pick fruit. Each family has a small yucca field to ensure food provisions. There's also sugarcane, plantains, papaya, corn, and canote. Each family has its own area to cultivate. The Selva's crops are very important to us. The 
the group of hunters goes ever deeper into the rainforest to find game. We always hunt near a river on one bank or the other, not too far from our community. But we try to keep changing hunting grounds. Sometimes we don't find any animals to hunt. The selva is huge and they hide in the trees. The blowgun makes no noise, and we can kill animals quietly. The animals we hunt don't try to escape because they don't hear us. It's natural. It's an ancient form of hunting, and our ancestors have always used it. The blowgun is very efficient. When we're hunting a monkey, sometimes it hides in a large tree among the branches. When that happens, we split up to encircle the animal. Sometimes a hunter must climb the tree to shoot poison darts. We might also climb a tree just to keep the monkey from jumping onto it to try to get away. When a monkey escapes after having been shot with a dart, it will go for about 20 minutes and then die. It's easy. The blowgun is used by all the hunters. You need to be 20 to 30 meters away, depending on where the animal is. But generally, we can kill at that distance. Back in Bameno, the women have brought home the yuca root. Yuca is consumed every day by the Warani and all ethnic people in the Amazon. It is the basis of their nutrition. 
Chicha is made with the yuca root that the women bring home in their baskets. There is no written Warani language. There is only the songs passed on by our ancestors through the generations for our children to sing. This is important, so we won't forget our customs to preserve our heritage and the Warani way of life. After the yuca root is cooked, the hot water is drained off and the women crush and chew on it in order to begin its fermentation. <laughs> if the yuca root is not chewed on, the chicha cannot ferment. This is a custom we have always had. We have to chew it to make good chicha, for it to become sweet and sugary. <laughs> it's pure yuca. It's natural. It's natural. In spite of the great distance they've walked, the hunters have found little game. This evening, there will not be enough meat to go round, and the villagers will have to content themselves with chicha. When we go hunting, we always bring some chicha. We have some for breakfast, one or two cups. Then we can keep looking for meat until nightfall. Then later we each have another cup or two, and it's enough to get home because our chicha is nice and thick and fills your stomach. It's delicious. <laughs> This monkey is called a chongo, but we call it a gata. It lives in trees and eats only leaves and fruit. The Warani Indians love monkey meat, but it has to be in season. In January or February, when the fruit are ripe, the monkeys grow plump. They get big and fat and are much tastier. Kimperi and I are making a fire so the women can make pottery. This is the only way to make a fire. It's difficult because of the humidity. <laughs> the Warani can have two or three wives. 
I would like to have two wives because it makes life happier. There's no rivalry between women, and that's why my relatives, my uncles, have always had two or three wives. That's life. Everyone is happy about the upcoming marriage between Moya and Mayra. I think they would like them to already be married. We're searching for a big tree so we can build a canoe. We need to use white cedar, which we call chonko, or red cedar. But nowadays there is no more red cedar, or if there is, it's very deep in the jungle, and we cannot carry the trunk all the way back. Those trees used to grow here, were here for centuries. And now we will no longer see the red cedar growing here. It has disappeared. Logging companies are invading us. This area is supposed to be under protection. Nothing matters to them. They cut all the large trees. They've cut down all we had. It takes a long time for a red cedar to grow. Because of this, we have lost a great deal of our territory. When they come, they build roads, they make noise. That's why the animals keep going further away. We would like the loggers to go away. To them, this is not important. They say they are cutting trees. We say they are killing them. Today, along the rivers and streams of the Warangi territory, not a single one of these precious trees remains. The traveling sawmills go ever deeper into the Selva rainforest, where the trees are sawed down on the spot. Ecuador has lost 50% of its rainforest over the last 50 years. Each year, 100,000 square kilometers of virgin forest go up in smoke in the Amazon. Yeah. Mm. Mm. In the Warini community, the knowledge and use of medicinal plants are the domain of the shaman. Fabian, age 12, has become an apprentice. <laughs> 
El Kemperi es chamán de pueblo. Kemperi es el village shaman. He heals us when we are sick, when we have a fever. He only uses medicinal plants. When Kemperi is gone, the village shaman may be a child he once healed, since the shaman's power is passed on to a sick child. The community comes together on the riverbank every day in the late afternoon. For Moya, this is a chance to be near his young fiancé, Mayra, on the eve of their marriage. To build the canoe, they will take turns hollowing it out over a two-week period. This morning, little Kena doesn't feel good. Her parents are taking her to see Kim Perry. Before, there were very few serious diseases here, not as many as now. But for years, civilization has been bringing new ones. It is very dangerous for the Warani. The people who come here from elsewhere bring the flu and give it to us. For a child, it is easy to catch the flu or a cough, and after two weeks or a month, after getting these illnesses, they can die, and we can't save them. 
If the companies come here, we will lose all our territory and the Warani will disappear. That is the future. I believe that unless the Warani fight to survive, there will be no more. If this goes on, we have no future. The Warani are peace-loving, but we must constantly fight to preserve our selva. We must learn to fight to protect nature in the Amazon. This is why we are trying to defend ourselves. This is our home, our own Amazon selva, in which we exist. The companies are coming ever closer, and we are forced to say that's enough for them to stop infringing upon our territory. They want to come further south toward our land. They've been poisoning our lives for over 20 years. We've always said that people would come and threaten us in our homes or cut down our trees. These people who kill cannot come. The government promised us protection, but if they do come, we will have no choice but to kill them. I want to live as a Warani. I don't want the rainforest to die because the selva is nature and nature is my life. It must remain for my children and grandchildren. I want to keep all of this, for it is the only thing we know of the world.